I've been asked to make a video by my student Karen A about the thorny problem of telling the people in your life that you are interested in tarot and how to approach it. Well, it's not easy, is it? And also it's probably not a one size fits all solution. The Obviously, the, the first thing I think we need to be mindful of is that we are not in this to change anybody's mind. We're not in this to convert anybody. No, I'm not saying that you are, of course, but just be mindful of the fact that people do get quite polarized about tarot. A lot of people, you know, they have been influenced by the fact that it's normally seen as being something to do with the occult, something to do with the big bad boy cards are always purveyors of misfortune in the media. So therefore, tarot does get a bit of a bad press as being, should we say, a bit of a dance on the dark side. The first thing I think we need to do is to allay those fears if indeed those fears exist. So it is not a dance on the dark side. This is not about the occult in the way we normally think of it. It is not about witchcraft. It is not about black magic. It is not about any kind of dark talking to evil spirits stuff. We're not doing that. We're not interested in it. That's not why we read tarot. So I think it's really interesting to talk about the fact of why you have become interested in tarot. What, what was it that happened that brought you to the point of being curious about it? And I like the word curious. Curious is a good word because it's not a dogmatic word. It's not a word that is saying, um, I believe a thing. It's saying I'm interested and I wanted to find out more. So I think that's a that's a very nice position to start with. Curious is a good position. Perhaps to say also, let them know that you're not interested in convincing them. You're not joining a mad cult. <laughs> you're not trying to bring them over into some sort of belief system, okay? We're not trying to recruit them into some um, weird alternative religious practice. That's not what this is. You're interested because it's something which has perhaps surprised you. That's always a good one. I was surprised by it and I, and I thought it would be interesting and useful to find out more and how it worked. That's for me, that was very important. I wanted to find out how it works. And of course, there is no clear answer to that. Now, depending on how comfortable that person is with the conversation about the energetic world, we can then say what we're doing is we're having a conversation with the potentials of life. You can put it like that that all, all potentials exist. And so when we read tarot, we're in some way able to tap into information that already exists. Now, if you want to go further and talk about spirit guides or talk about the energetic world in, in a more specific way, again, you're going to have to be guided by the comfort zone of the person you're talking to. And please do always be respectful of their position. We are not going to be dallying with the temptation to convince anyone because we don't need to okay and and if their position comes back as being dogmatic and negative in any way just change the subject right it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter it doesn't matter what anyone believes all that matters is is it useful to you and if they're interested in finding out more, that's great too, isn't it? Maybe you can show them what you've discovered or talk to them about it more, but take it on a stage by stage basis, right? Don't push anybody into a position of, of having to feel like they need to state a case of some sort. Obviously, we want to acknowledge the fact that there is no logical reason 
why tarot should work. Not logical. Of course it isn't. We know that. It makes no logical sense at all. But here's the thing. It does appear to work. And that's interesting, isn't it? If you have an inquiring mind, it's interesting. How does it work? Are we are we tuning into potentials? Are we talking to the energetic world? Are we talking to spirit guides? Who are we talking to? Now, also what's very important here is that you make it clear that you are a person who has an intelligent brain and that you are the absolute arbiter of what you do with the information. So if you were to get guidance through your tarot reading that you felt uncomfortable with or you felt that was not in your favour and was not positive in your life, you would not take any notice of it. We always know the truth when we hear it and we must always use our own intelligent mind to be the judge of what's coming back, which is how we know whether or not the information is of use to us and is truthful. There should be enough about the information that resonates with you so that you know there's more to know and it would be interesting to find out more and that you could make that point to the people concerned or the person concerned that basically there was enough that resonated not in a general way to make it interesting and to pique your curiosity. But you are not joining a cult. You are not becoming a religious nut. You are not practicing witchcraft. You are not talking to evil spirits. You are exactly the same person you've always been. You're just interested in this thing because it's kind of a bit uh, different and actually fascinating. You can talk to them about the fact, it, 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 depending on their interest, that Jung, who was one of the most respected philosophers and psychoanalysts of all time found tarot to be an incredibly useful part of his work with his clients. He didn't think it was nonsense. He absolutely badged it up as a conversation with the unconscious. And if that's what makes it work in the conversation, that's absolutely fine too. So I think it's important to be really honest about why you're doing it but also to be very mindful of the, the sensibilities of the person you're talking to so that they don't feel that you're trying to push them into a corner or you're trying to get them to believe what you believe or what you think it's it's not about that it's all a bit of a sensitivity exercise isn't it this and i think allaying people's fears is probably first and foremost the most important place to start and then bearing in mind what they say then you can go further into whether or not you want to add more detail and what would be a fun thing to do of course would be to do a little reading for yourself prior to talking to them to take some guidance on what you can expect maybe what approach you could take what you shouldn't do and what you can expect from them if you go ahead and have that conversation and perhaps what it would mean for your relationship with that person moving forward should you discuss it with them. You can, it's just as a, as a little fun exercise and then just see how that plays out for you and, and see what the results of that are. This is not an exact science. Everybody's different. Every relationship is different. As I said, please don't go in and feel that you have to persuade anyone that's not what we're about here um so that's my take on it i hope that's been useful i mean i personally have had people be very dogmatic to me i've talked about it in a few videos i've had friends who basically told me to my face they just thought it was complete rubbish and and this friend she said to me well it's just fake isn't it it just is fake and i said oh, what do you you've known me a long time do you do you do you think that i'm lying and she went well no 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 i don't i mean deluded maybe but not lying and i responded by just gently turning the subject through to something else I, it's not something that we discuss i don't need anyone's approval and, and neither should you 
And of course, I've had friends who were um, Christian, who were very keen that for me to know that, you know, obviously this is not a positive thing for me and that I'm obviously talking to evil spirits. And even though I said I can have a conversation with God through the cards, why not? I've had some very beautiful conversations with God through the cards. Why not? I, I, my personal journey is mine and, and you must share what you're comfortable sharing. And as I said, put them first in the, in, in the conversation. Put them first and be very gentle with what you say and, and be very positive about it. Well, I hope that's helpful. Um, I'm actually thinking of doing a live uh, YouTube thing once a week where I do uh, mini readings for everybody. As we're traveling, as you can see, we are in Gus the Bus. Um, although we haven't gone anywhere yet, <laughs> but we will do. We'll be on the road, tarot on the road, adventures in Gus the Bus. But no matter where you are, no matter where I am, we can read together in exactly the same way as we always do. Nothing actually changes. Tell me what you think about me doing a little live YouTube once once a week and doing some live readings. That would be quite fun, I think, as we're on the road. Um, if you like the channel, do like and subscribe and then you'll get notifications whenever a new video comes out. I normally record a video once a week in some capacity. And obviously this would be extra, so you would get notifications for that as well. Um, like and subscribe. Please leave me a comment. Do love, love, love to hear your comments. And I will say goodbye and I hope to see you soon. Thank you then. Bye bye.